Hello again, everybody, and this is the Coaches Show, and we are live from Pop Sunset Grill. And uh, glad to have you with us on this beautiful Monday night. Well, maybe it's not beautiful up in Michigan or in the northeast part of the country where it's snowing, but down here it's just right around 70 degrees. Tonight with me uh, is uh, Jeremy Martin, and he's the head coach of the uh, Venice Girls Volleyball, uh, Volleyball Basketball Team. How did I get the, yeah, the, well, volleyball, that's right. And Sadie Kluner, who's got dual disciplines this year, and she's on the basketball team, as is Chloe, and I, we'll, we'll find out your last name in a minute, and Elia, and uh, she's over here as well. Welcome to the program, Jeremy. Thank you for having us. Truly appreciate it. Yeah, this is, this is really good stuff. Before we get into the, to, into the nuts and bolts of the show, let's just spend just a few moments talking about Kobe Bryant uh, maybe his influence on the game, and then maybe the gals even have an input on that as well. Go, Jeremy. I mean, my first thought of Kobe Bryant is the, the destiny to win. I mean, he was a winner in everything he did. He would do anything he could to win. He would cheer his teammates on. I mean, he just did everything to win. Um, and I kind of steal that mentality. I'm a very competitive person. Um, and watching him work day in, day, in, day out, I mean, he spent 24 hours a day on his craft. Um, and it's truly, I mean, my heart goes out to him and his family. Uh, it's just it's a sad, sad, sad day yesterday yeah. uh, as a basketball fan. And that's one of those days where you'll never forget where you were when you heard the news, huh? 100%. He's a legend. Legends last forever, and I know he will. Yeah, it's like those days, you know, you never forget where you were when the towers of 9-11, where they crumbled, and in certain events in history, and that's one of those major events. 100%. 100%. And especially watching him, it's more of our time era, so we can relate to him more um, other than, you know, the past in Bay. Yeah, NBA I think superstars. he was what, born in 78. 78. Yeah. 78. Sadie, um, we, we had a chance to interview you with the volleyball coaches show, but uh, tell us about Kobe Bryant and maybe his influence on you or his uh, – just tell us a little bit. Um, I just know that growing up, whenever I would – or any of like any one in our generation whenever we'd go to like shoe like a something in the trash can everyone would be like Kobe so now it's it's really upsetting when you think about that like now it's like not Kobe it's like for Kobe and i just know that like his family must be taking it really hard right now and and he was with one of his daughters he was with, yeah Gianna that was like that was his oldest daughter who she he had an interview on a talk show I saw it and it was like um, everyone wanted him to have a boy to like carry on the legacy and she's like I got it like because she wanted to go to the WNBA and carry on in her father's footsteps so it's just really heartbreaking yeah Chloe welcome to the program this is your first time on TV remotes army welcome to the coaches show Kobe uh, Bryant maybe his influence with you um he was a legend and a great role model basketball and he was a good person and just watching him play he was a great player and he'll really be missed and like Sadie said I remember in middle school throwing stuff like in the trash can yelling Kobe and just he's one of those I can I mean Michael Jordan or maybe Larry Bird in earlier generations or Magic Johnson he was that guy Kobe was your generation's uh, yeah. Michael Jordan right yeah Okay, Elia, and it's not Ellis or Elia, but it's Elia, and uh, you, you corrected me a little bit. Uh, Kobe, to you. Um, I grew up watching the NBA, so Kobe was definitely had a big impact in my life. He motivated me on the, like on the court too, but he was such a like a good person. You could see it, and he he was really just it was devastating when I heard the news, and his daughter being on the plane. I watched so many interviews, so many of her games after I heard the news, and it's just heartbreaking seeing the bond they had. Mm. And it's just like, I feel bad for their family right now. I just hope that they can. I hope his last, his other daughter, I think she's going to play basketball, and I hope she can carry on his legacy like Gianna wanted to. You got three seniors here. And uh, she grew up watching the NBA. Jeremy, yep. uh, you're, you're going to be losing three key people here. And uh, uh, just tell a little, tell us a little bit about these three gals. Um, first, don't remind me of that. Coming into a new <laughs> program and being a senior, it's hard. 
Uh, these three girls stepped up every single day. They so in other words, uh, uh, girls basketball at Venice was new for each one of these girls this year? No, new to me because oh, I new. was new to the program this year. So th I never met them before on the basketball court. Um, so they were new to me. And it, coming in as a new coach, a new system, learning new things as a senior, um, I mean, we had to get them up to speed quick as possible. Um, but the problem is time goes by so fast, and this is their last week. And I didn't sleep much last night thinking about, you know, Monday's here. It's their last week. Um, they truly, I, I said coming into this program, I was going to impact their life every day. But I've been truly blessed that they have impacted my life every single day since I met them. Um, it's truly going to be a huge miss to the program. You know, when I did those few years of teaching, I found that I wanted to impact their lives. And, uh, and I had a little, um, a little pendant type of thing that was given by the, uh, um, the uh, Education Association okay. back then. And it said, make a difference. Yep. And you know what? I saw that because it was on my keychain. Every day I saw that. I had an apple said, make a difference. And yet, at the same time, as much as I wanted to do that, I ended up getting more in return. Oh, it's it truly happened this year uh, through our basketball program. They've given us so much. Um, I mean, like I said, they're going to be missed. They make a difference in my life every single day. And i uh, just truly blessed to have the opportunity to coach them. Mm. Okay, Sadie, uh, I asked you some key questions back in volleyball time because this is the first time that you were, back then was the first time you were on TV. And uh, we had Coach Martin on that very night. And I, I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe that that night, that interview here at Pops, was probably instrumental in maybe swaying you over to play basketball this year. Is there any truth in that thinking? It definitely was because I know Jeremy had coached my older brother, Sean. Plus is that 10 bucks he slipped yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, She's worth way more than $10. <laughs> he had coached my older brother, Sean, and I just know that Sean was absolutely in love with him. And I really wanted to play basketball this year because it's my last year. I was like, you know what? Because I played basketball growing up with my um, uncle who's the boys coach so it was like me and my cousins and so that was like um, like a family bonding type of thing and um, I just I wanted to play basketball and I wanted to go out and I, and I th when I found out he was going to be the coach this year I was like I have to play mm -hmm. so was it tough uh, did, did you play on the on the squad last year Chloe yes I did Okay, so this is, uh, come on in, this is Mike. Uh, we, we affectionately call him Pablo. Pablo. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody's great here. Chloe's first time coming over. Now, he, she just explained that it was because of the interview that she's decided to play. But you've, you guys, I believe, have accepted her on the team, and you guys are excelling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we played together when we were younger growing up, too, through elementary and middle, through elementary and middle school, and... When I found out she was going to play, I was pretty excited to have her on our team. Now, what position do you play? I'm a, like a three. I'm a forward. A forward? Shooting guard forward. Okay, so a shooting forward. All right, all right. All right, Ellie, I'm going to ask you the same question. We're going to kind of go around because now Sadie was the new girl on the block come, what, November when all this came in together, and, and she came right off of volleyball. Just you're, you're, you're thinking about that process. You have to hold it close. I never got to play with Sadie. I play, we both played our freshman year. I played sophomore year, and then last year I didn't play. I was so excited to hear that she was going to play because we needed her. We definitely needed her. She was, she's like an essential part of our team right now. And I was just so happy to hear that she decided to play. The, the unity amongst the team, what is that like? This year, it's the best it's ever been. Really? We're all a family. Coach Martin... He worked so hard to make us all like super close, and it worked. We're just really, really, really close. Okay, Jeremy, um, um, the elephant in the room, but you, you're, you're pretty proud of it. What's your record this year? Okay, be, maybe you're not be, proud of it. It could be better. Could be better. At, at, um, but no, we have the most wins since the 2015, 2016. Uh, okay. We're eight and eleven. After this week, we'll be eleven and eleven. Wow, that's great. We're making changes. Well. They started it. Yeah. And the culture, you've seen these three gals this season, and you've got new girls that are going to have to step up into the program, just like the boys. They have to step up into the plan. Yep. Uh, Coach Wheatley, he's got to get new people stepping up into volleyball. 
uh, in all the, uh, you know, uh, Faulkner with baseball, they, you know, you have to kind of groom and grow that next class to come in and replace the outgoings, and you need to develop that culture below. What would you see on the culture? I mean, I already have started with uh, building that the youth. Um, I have one of the reasons we're so successful is because my staff is tremendous, um, and I also have a lot of help in the middle school programs. Uh, Ann Ross has really stepped up at Venice Christian. She's taken up my youth. Um, we, I do a YMCA clinic every Friday. Cool. Um, there's probably on average 30, 30 some ki- um, girls there playing every single every Friday for two hours. Um, they're a huge Im- impact. Uh, what I tell what I told them when I first started this, I want them to come back in 10 years and say I started this program and look where it's uh, gone, um, and it's I'm doing it for them. So. Absolutely. That, that's great. Now, uh, this is the Coaches Show on Remotes Are Me, and we're live at Pop Sunset Grill. They supply the venue for us, and they also supply some fantastic food. I had a great cheeseburger earlier, and uh, these gals, I mean, we got salmon BLTs coming. What, what we got? We got the shrimp. Oh. Oh, the, 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 the sunset uh, platter or something. I don't know. <laughs> And uh, but but uh, the food is absolutely fantastic. Tomorrow night, this is kind of neat how it was scheduled out. We've got a, a doubleheader varsity game. Yes, we do. So at six o'clock, we've got girls varsity playing Oasis. Correct. And then we've got boys varsity playing Oasis at seven thirty. Correct. So you're hoping that they'll be in the Oasis drinking their mai tais, and you guys are going to squash them. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, I mean, we're truly excited for the opportunity to play them. Um, it's also awesome to tr- truly build, build a program at home. Um, I think they can attest to it, but the last game, it felt different. Um, it's feeling different. There's a huge community support. Um, so, uh, Saturday at Applebee's, we fed over uh, 100 at breakfast. I mean, I got to truly – I told them I'm going to, into the community – and I'm going to make this program proud. Um, and I've truly been doing everything I can to make that happen. I want our support in the community from the Montgomery family to Center for Sight, all these wonderful people helping this program uh, truly means a lot. Um, like I said, we couldn't do it without our community and my staff. I couldn't do it. Yeah, you see right up here above me, uh, we've got our sponsors here. We've got uh, McKenzie of Florida, McKenzie Construction. We want to thank them for sponsoring the boys' basketball games this season and the uh, coaches' show. And then we've got Montgomery's right here, right, right there. And, uh, and so they sponsor your program as well as many things at uh, yes, Venice do. High School. We want to thank them as well. And then Pop Sunset Grill. Okay, I'm going to start. We're going to go the other way now. Uh, tomorrow night, you're op- it's not an opening act for the boys because you guys could be just as entertaining, if not more so, and be more competitive and uh, – what do you think about that opportunity? Or are you not even thinking about that? You're just going to go out and play. I'm just excited because the girls' games are, I don't know, I don't even know how to say it. We're underappreciated, I would say. And I'm excited to be like before the boys because I know more people are going to show out. And it's like an opportunity to show them that we're the same thing, even better. I mean, people need to come out more. When I started doing hoops down here six years ago, uh, girls was not broadcast at all. And I developed a thing called Hometown Hoops, and now there's a couple other stations across the country that have developed that same thing called Hometown Hoops. So, I mean, I didn't patent that name or anything, but girls' basketball was part of that because, number one, they should not be discriminated against because they're playing and by their gender. But I actually found sometimes it was more competitive and the line we, we came up with was one of, with the color commentator I had at the time, and she was a former coach, and she said they never met a floor they didn't like. And I see that the girls kind of get down on the floor and scrap a little bit more, and the guys try to finesse it, and it's like they're afraid to scrape their knees. You, you see that too? For sure, for sure, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're always fighting for the ball and everything, and the boys are just putting on a show. I mean, they're just trying to dunk the ball. That's it pretty much. Okay, you get, boys, you got that, so. Vince Marino? She called you out. <laughs> okay, Chloe. Um, 
But you know what I'm saying, though. I mean, you guys are not afraid to scrap down there and fight for the ball and get that. And uh, that, I think, is exciting to watch with girls basketball. And not to mention, you start popping threes and you start doing defense. And, uh, by the way, do you like defense or offense better? I prefer defense better. It's more active. And you like to get in their face? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Her offensive game got a lot better this year, too, though. I wish I had her a few more years. You know, there, there, was, there was a team, it was about three years ago, I recall, and this gal had so much mascara on, it's amazing. Her eye, eyelids were not on the floor. But yet, but yet, yet, with the eyeliner and everything, she was almost scary. And when she came on down, they actually parted the ways and let her come through and go to the hoop. Have you, have you noticed that there are some opponents that, that, that are like that? And, and you might think that they're cosmetic divas, but yet they play good ball. Yes, I've noticed that too. All right. You, you're laughing about that, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen it in volleyball, and you see it in basketball. 100%. Normally, the girls who wear more makeup are like are the ones who are, I wouldn't say more athletic, but are doing more because I feel like, I don't know, like in volleyball, I know this one girl, she used to wear these long eyelashes. So like you know when I said they're, 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 yes. <laughs> they're on the floor. Yeah, so I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. All right. You like the scrappiness, and I, I saw you nodding your head about this, that girls' basketball can be different than boys' basketball. And, Jeremy, you noticed this as well, and, and it's not anything against boys' basketball, but there's just something ultra-competitive about girls on the court. I would say it's 100% more physical just because I know all the, all the guys, like, you know, like Elia said, they're just trying to finesse the ball and just trying to, you know, shoot threes and girls, like, most of the time, we take a lot of our shots, like, inside the paint, you know. So there's a lot more opportunity to get blocked or to get the ball stolen or, you know, for, like, the defense to steal the ball from you. Or, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I can just imagine you doing one of those LeBron James defensive <laughs> moves because of your volleyball experience where they're shooting it and you just bang it off of the backboard. That she goes, does that a uh -oh. lot. <laughs> Chloe, huh? She does that a lot. And that and so so defense is more of your thing. I would say I get more competitive when it comes to defense because I don't want anyone to score on me. Okay. Because then it, you know, I don't want it to be my fault. Um, but you know, I love offense and I love when I have like an open, like wide open layup and or like live or like guard if she, because I just love like. If she passes me the ball and it's like an easy point, and I just love running back down the court and everyone high fiving, like. That. Do you like the layups or the threes? Oh, I don't shoot threes. So in other words, you like so so, so so. <laughs> all right, coach, you've got three seniors here. Which one likes to take it into the paint more? I probably uh, uh, Sadie. Sadie, Sadie, one hundred percent. All right, what about Chloe? Chloe's offensive game really changed in the last few weeks. Uh, she can shoot threes like no other. Really? Not as good as Elia yet, but she's getting there. I Do think she's the best shooter in the country. Who's that, Elia? Chloe yeah. has improved so much this season. Like her three. Now, yeah, now, now, now she can make in. a basket. Is that what you're saying? No, she <laughs> went in, but now it's insane. Like it's crazy. It's just it's something I saw this season. It's it's crazy. Do you like to drive it in the paint? I shoot threes more. Do I, you? Sometimes I'll drive, but I'm. Now, do you do the James Harden where you stop and then, and, and then literally take three steps without traveling? No. Does that bother you when you see that? I mean, yeah, but if they don't call it, it's fair game. So. Okay, so she drives in the paint, and you like to take threes, and you're kind of like uh, you want to do defense, but you're like all over the place. She is all over the place. Are you like the libero? Okay, Sadie, would she be like the libero because she's big on defense? And you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Now, explain uh, what, what in, in volleyball terms, explain what l the libero is. It's the defensive person, but it kind of is like the quarterback of the defense. It's, yeah, it's like the defensive specialist. So um, they're the best defensive player on the court, which is why they uh, get to wear a different jersey. Um, so when And there are restrictions. Yeah, they're not allowed to play in the front row, but um, – most of the time they don't anyways because they're shorter. But when like a... Oh, I didn't mean that. No, no, no. <laughs> when a front row player rotates back row and they're not as good as a passer, the libero can come in whenever they want and just basically take over the defense and lead the team with that. 
All right, uh, this is Remotes Army. Uh, hit the subscribe button, and uh, when we go live on air tomorrow night uh, to watch these gals play at 6 o'clock against the Oasis, you'll get the alert if you hit the bell as well. So not only subscribe, but hit that bell, and when we go live, you'll get the alert and say Remotes Army is live, and then you can watch the game tomorrow night. Um, and uh, come on in, and uh, you, you're going to see some fabulous food here. Right, right here at Pop Sunset Grill. So, uh, all right, and this is and who uh, whose order is this? This it's is mine. The fried shrimp basket right. is the fried best shrimp here. right here. This is the salmon BLT. Look at that, Sadie. K kind of tilted a little bit to the camera. There you go, and 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 you got uh, tortillas or what? Fish tacos. Fish tacos, and you got the. The, the gluten-free uh, quesadillas. Uh, gluten-free quesadillas. Tomorrow night, Oasis. What are you looking for? I mean, this defense has been. I mean, this. I would. I would say we're going to play defense with pride. We're going to move the ball. Uh, we, we have really been working on our passing, our shooting, um, tremendously this year. How's um, Oasis doing this year? Are they a good team? They're not bad. There's some. There's some wins that I'm impressed with, and then there's some losses that. Um, I'm kind of shocked about it's going to be a battle tomorrow weaknesses that you want to exploit I mean for them in other words you see something that you can exploit what I can uh, what I see is basically we're, we're without gonna, giving away the whole plan we're going to turn them over tomorrow uh, their defense they have really stepped up in, in the last few weeks with about pride uh, we, that's what we teach on defense it's about pride you're playing for your sister um, every single possession means something um, and, and I think that's where uh, if we take I kind of split it up every four minutes, um, and if we can take care of the four minutes intermittals that we need to take care of, well, the scoreboard will take care of itself. Okay, Sadie. Um, you have probably seen some tape. If you have not seen tape, you've heard the coach talk about Oasis. What is your mental attack on Oasis going in for tomorrow night? Um, well, normally when we play teams, I'm one of the biggest players on the court, so... Um, just to shut them down in defense, honestly. Like, because I'm in the paint, so if anyone tries to go in for a layup or anything, I'll just be there and block the ball out. Try and intimidate them a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, th yeah. there's nothing wrong. For you, Chloe, you've heard the coach, and, you, and you've been talking about this game, and this is a big game, and you got varsity and varsity, two varsity games. But what, in your mind, are you focusing on for tomorrow night? Um, I typically am up top guarding the, their guard, so just not letting her get How do you think you're going to match up? I think I'll do pretty well against them. We really focus on this year. It's all about us. Okay. They should be worried about us. Um, I give them a game plans very briefly um, because I want them to worry about our execution. I want them to worry about – Oasis should be worried about Venice. We shouldn't be worried yes. about Oasis. Um, and that's kind of how I, I try to d steal in confidence in them every single day. Let's not worry about they, what they do. Let's do what we do really well, and then we will adjust as we need to. Um, that's kind of how we approached every game every year this year um, because I really came in talking about confidence with these girls. I want them to believe in everything they do, every single thing and part of the game. I want them to believe that they can do it. I believe in them. I want them to believe in each other. Um, so that's what we really focus on more about us this year rather than any any opponent. Okay, Elia. Um do you have another game after tomorrow night this week? Yes, we have three games this week. Three, okay, so you have Tuesday, and what's the other two? Wednesday we're away at ODA, and Thursday is our senior night home. Okay. So. Now, uh, then next week, you're preparing this week, I, not, not to look far and far ahead. He said Braden River is going to be probably your first opponent, but how do you think you're going to stack up going into districts, regionals? Well, after seeing how we can play up to our potential, we've done really, really good. In it takes games. it takes almost a season to get to that point, exactly, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So I think I think we definitely have a chance against Great, Braden River. So if we play up to our potential and as we played our best game, I think we'll be fine. I yeah. It's, we'll be fine. In the playoffs, it's win or go home, isn't it? It is. It is. That, that, I mean, that's. That, you want to talk about Kobe Bryant? That's the destiny to win. Yeah. Those are the moments that, you know, we'll always remember. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Chloe, and uh, I'm going to ask you all the same question, and I forgot to ask you this. Maybe I did ask you this. 
Uh, favorite subject in school? Math or science. It's so, so it's one of those, uh, the, the technical type of things. What do you hope to do? Af- I know I asked you this, but what do you hope to do after you graduate? I plan to go to college and study to be an architect. Do All right. I, I love architecture. A school, what, Cincinnati, Kent State? Uh, UCF. UCF? Okay. All right. Uh, have you done any playing around with architecture now? Yeah, I'm in the engineering program at our school. I have have you made models? Three years. What? Have you made models yet? We have not made bottles. We've made rockets from bottles. Yeah, well, you end up having to make models on the plant. So you might develop a plan, then you have to make a model. If we looked at your iPod or, or <laughs> iPad, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. She thought you said bottles. Bottles? You have bottle. to make a bottle? <laughs> bottle yeah, yeah, a bottle rockets. Oh, well, you got rockets. Well, you go to NASA over there. What kind of music do you like to listen to? I like a lot of music, everything really. Do you have uh, headphones on before the game to get uh, get in the groove? Sometimes, but what would it be? It wouldn't be heavy metal. <laughs> Headbang and stuff. We have a speaker and we're all listening to the same thing. All right, Sadie, you've been offered, and uh, you're going to college, and uh, you've got a, a scholarship for uh, volleyball. Yes. Where to? Uh, Anderson University in South Carolina. All right. All right. And uh, so that's where, and she's still laughing about her bottle rockets here. Um, favorite music? Is it the heavy metal? No. Uh, <laughs> screamo. Just kidding. Um, I would say it's a mix between country okay. and then hip hop. So, like, very opposite spectrums. Wow. Yeah. Imagine putting those two together. I think they tried, haven't they? I have to be in in the right mood for each of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, Elia. Favorite subject in school? Science, for sure. Okay, so you guys in any of the same classes? You in, like, honors classes or something? I don't go to Venice. I go to Pineview. (laughs) Well, now, how do you get get her to be on your team? Uh, um, Yeah, explain it to me. Yeah, because... Okay, so where she lives at. doesn't have high school sports. Okay. So I'm allowed to play at, at any high school I want to. So there's a little bit of commuting after school, isn't there, for practice? Well, I live really close to Venice, so it's, it's yes. okay. But Venice is like my second school. It's the same. I spend the same amount of time at each, I would say. All right, so what do you want to do after uh, high school, after you um, graduate from Pineview? Well, I'm definitely going to college, and I'm stuck between majoring in either biology or psychology. So either become a cardiologist. Wow, now those are two, like, <laughs> yeah, over here. Either a cardiologist or a forensic psychologist. So we'll see. Okay. Which one are you leaning toward? Well, I've always wanted to be a cardiologist my whole life. And I recently just... Well, you know, this is a target-rich environment down here in Southwest <laughs> Florida. Yeah. I'll be your first patient. <laughs> I don't know. I might be beating you after I had that burger. Okay. What kind of music do you like? Uh, anything, like Chloe, except country. Not really a country fan. Or hard okay, rock. we we got country here. Um, classical? No. <laughs> oh, I like anything except country. No. Classical? No. <laughs> Should we jazz? No. <laughs> I'm debunking her <laughs> anything. Have you noticed that? Yes. All right. Well, um, anything Chloe like listens to, she'll listen to it. Or anything like that. Okay. All right. Just none of that country or hard rock or classical or jazz. <laughs> All right. So, so, you've got the playoffs here coming up in just a couple of weeks, and then you're pretty much done as far as basketball for the season, but you've got your eyes probably set on next year and start developing for the summer workouts and, and things like that, huh? 100%. And we, we talk, I already talked about it my staff on the way here. As soon as we, the playoffs end, we will be tomorrow, the next day, we'll be ready for starting next year. I'm so excited. I mean, we've grown so much as a team this year, if, and I only had them for a few months. Um, I can't wait if I have them for a whole year. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be amazing. It's like having a dad and having to turn them out to the world, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I'm because, a hard time wait, with well, it. yeah, because cause you've, you've trained them, you've worked them, and, and you've seen them develop from November to those first few games that, that you had and some losses and going through things, and now all of a sudden you're going to be at the 11-11 mark, 
And there's there's struggles along the way. There's no doubt about that. 100%. We lost our first five games. Uh, the, I scheduled really hard in the beginning. I wanted them to see where we need to be and want to be. So we did that in the beginning. Um, so we worked every single day from that. Um, and the end of the year, we have had tremendous success just so we can see where we need to be and wh how we need to work every day in practice. Sadie, Coach Wheatley does that a lot. He schedules way above. He'll, he's not afraid to play number one in the country if he can find them to get them here. Um, that does help the volleyball team, doesn't it? Yeah, one of our first games this year was against the um, Alabama State Champions. Last year, they came down. From I Alabama remember. I called play. that game. Yeah, so um, we ended up beating them, too. So we just wanted to play really hard teams just to, like Jeremy said, see where we were and see where we need to be because it's not the beginning of the season that matters. Like, it's not anything that matters. It's it's the end. And when, you know, when districts comes and regionals, because a lot of people didn't think we were even going to win districts this year in volleyball because they had a lot of doubt because of our record. So. Well, it's the adversity you go through and – Two things, working through the adversity on the competition of the actual sport and then working through the adversity as a team framework. Kind of explain that, Coach. Yeah, I mean, you, for, for me as a first-year coach, for sure, I needed to put them in situations, how to teach them, how, how to learn from them. Um, I'm, I'm a new coach to the things that they've done and the things they've done in the past. Um, so if I can put us against competition at the highest level, it really can narrow down what we need to work on every single day. Um, and, and also, I told them it, we were go, we we're going to climb a huge mountain this year. And then once we got through the about the fourth or fifth game, we started seeing the sunrise. And then from there, um, we just took off. So yeah. we just had to get through those tough moments. I think those tough moments brought us closer together as a team. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely helped us prepare every single day in practice because – we knew where we needed to be. All right, subscribe to the channel tomorrow night, 6 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. It'll be two varsity teams. It'll be the girls' varsity team of Venice playing Oasis in the teepee. Let's pack it out. And then at 7.30, it's going to be the boys' varsity team playing Oasis in the teepee. Okay, some final thoughts because you girls are hungry and you're saying that we can't eat because people are going to watch us dribble all over ourselves. Uh, some final thoughts here, Elia. season went the way it did everything about it was just amazing i really really hope we get far in districts and i i think we can for sure so yeah. all right chloe uh, some f some final thoughts uh it could be about anything the game tomorrow night you're looking forward to eating those those uh, fish tacos or whatever um i have to agree with ellie i'm really happy the way this season went we've improved so much in the past few months since um since summer really We've been working really hard and look forward to win tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, Sadie, final thought. I was just really happy to, like, you know, be welcomed onto the team again since I haven't yeah. played since freshman year. So um, I felt like I became really close with all the girls on the team and, you know, they're like their family. So I was just really happy to be able to have this journey with them. Uh, super. Okay, a final thought, Coach, and then we'll close out with you. Oh, no, I'm truly blessed for first for you having us. Uh, these are three wonderful seniors. Um, they've impacted my life, like I said, every single day. And it's truly going to miss them so much. Um, we're actually going to go to dinner together just to kind of talk about, you know, what's going uh, going forward and what I could do better. Um, I will always be there for them. Um, and I'm so excited that uh, I got to be a part of their senior year. Yeah, excellent. Well, we're going to be rooting you guys on tomorrow night against Oasis. We want to thank our sponsors, and they're right up here. McKenzie of uh, Florida, McKenzie Construction. They have those big, huge diggers. And uh, we want to thank Scott Huber and the gang there. Then we want to thank, there it is right there, Montgomery Color Tile. And uh, they, they sponsor your games and, and all, and uh, just some really good folks. right over. I think they're on East Venice Avenue, aren't they? East Venice Avenue. And then Pop Sunset Grill for hosting us right here and uh, providing the food for the group. Well, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, join us live on Remotes RME. Until next time, thank you for watching.